complete architectural diagram of PIC 16F 877A. So here you can see you are having a CPU. Then the CPU will be having all the other peripherals. All the surrounding areas are the peripherals present in this controller. So here you can see your A to D converter, your oscillator, internal oscillator, then your digital port, port we told no? it is a collection of pins, reset circuitry, EP ROM, program memory. So here you can you are having 8K of program memory, 8 kilobyte of program memory, RAM 36, 368, this is the RAM. Then S, what is meant by this SFR? SFR means special function register. So your total register is divided into two, special function register and general purpose register. So what is meant by special function register? Special function register means it is used for certain special functions. So what are those special functions? for configuring all these devices because in your controller all this device will be always present but depending upon my settings any one particular peripheral will be working always you will be having all this peripheral but whichever peripheral you are configuring that peripheral only will work so how will configure this peripheral that will be done by using special function registers. Then why you are having general purpose registers? So general purpose registers are similar to RAM or RAM is nothing but your general purpose registers. So why you are using general purpose registers? For storing your temporary data. For example, you need to add 1 plus 2. So your 1 and 2 will be present in general purpose area or you need to count something. So your count variable will be present in this area, but it is volatile in nature. When you are resetting, content of RAM will be erased. <coughs> then program memory will be loading your program and that is read only memory, flash ROM, read only memory. So it is non-volatile, it can it will not be erased. The CPU ROM is also non-volatile. And all the other circuitries are there. You can see Vastok timer also. Vastok timer is very near to your CPU. Why? Because it needs to reset the CPU. <coughs> so this will be your complete pin diagram of PIC 16 F877A. That will be your controller. And it is here we will be using 40 pin DIP package. So many packages are available. But for manufacturing the board and all, this deep package is, dual inline package is easier. So that we can remove that. If uh, that uh, chip is not working, we can remove, we can place other one like that. And these are the <coughs> ports. In this pick, you are having five ports. Here you, you had seen, no? Port A, port B, port C, port D, port T. E. So what is meant by port? It is a collection of pins and these pins are belonging to port B. These pins are belonging to port A. These are belonging to port C. These are belonging to port D. So how we will identify whether it is port B, port A, etc. And how much is the size of each of the port? Generally, all ports are of size 8-bit because it is an 8-bit controller. All the registers are of size 8-bit. But here, port A is having 6 pins only. That is represented by RI0 to RI5. Port A is having 6 pins. Port B is having 8 pins. Port C is having 8 pins port D is having. So, A is 6 pin, B, C, D is 8 pin. A is, eight, A is 6 pin, B, port B, port C, port D 8 pin. Then port E is having 3 pins. 
So all are not having 8 pins, only B, C and D is having 8 pin. Port A is 6, port E is 5 pin seats. And this VDD and VSS are used for giving the supply and ground. Here you can see oscillator 1 and oscillator 2, these two pins, pin number 13 and 14. These are used for connecting your crystal oscillator. And first one is memory clear that is used for connecting your reset. That is whenever you are applying a ground, it will be resetted. <coughs> or whenever at the time of startup, when you are resetting, if you are giving VPP, that is, that is your VCC itself, it will be resetted. At the time of switching on, you will be giving VCC, then it will be resetted. And in addition to that, somewhere in between the execution, I need to reset. So what I will do? I will apply ground to this pin. That is a memory clear bar. Bar means that is active <coughs> low signal. This is the complete block diagram. So here you can see this is the instruction memory, flash ROM. This is the data memory, RAM file registers. This is the instruction bus. So you can see it is 14 bit size because it is mid range. This is the data bus. It is of 8 bit size since it is an 8 bit controller. Then you can see one special thing stack. Here you are having 8 level hardware stack. Usually in the program we will be uh, assigning the stack depending upon the program. But here you are having only 8 level hardware stack and it is circular buffer like thing. So for example, why you are using a stack? Whenever you need to execute some subroutine, for example, you had written one program, there I am in between I am calling one function to some other function. So what it will do? When it is seeing this function call, it will store the contents of all the registers and program counter to some area known as stack. And then it will go to the subroutine and execute the program, execute that subroutine, then it will come back to the main program. So it will store the present contents, then it will go to the subroutine, finish that and come back. So that area where your registers and program counter is stored is known as stack. So here from this what do you mean 8 level hardware stack, so if you are for, uh, calling one function call, it will take one area. So similarly, it can do only 8 nested calls in the program, it can do only 8 nested call. What is meant by nested call? Inside one function you are giving another call, so it can do only 8 nested call. If you are including next nth one, what it will do? It will erase the first location. <laughs> so your first address will be gone. So that is known as 8 level deep hardware stack of size 13 bit. Next one is this W register. In 8085 we had heard about accumulator, no? 8086 also. Similar to accumulator here we are having W register or work register that is one of the important register. It will be taking part in all the arithmetical and logical operations. And this is your ALU. Then next we will see about the memory of 16F877A. Here we are having 8 KB of program memory, 366 bytes of data memory and 256 bytes of EPROM. And this data memory itself is divided into two special function registers and general purpose registers. These are used for configuring the peripheral. <coughs> general purpose registers are used for your temporary storage of some variable. <coughs> and this is your complete memory map of your controller. So here you can see your program counter, then eight level deep stack. And from here, your actual program memory is starting. 
from here your program memory is starting that is from 0 0 0 0 that is known as the reset vector from there your program will start executing in the case of embedded device what uh, in the case of ordinary C program what it will do after executing the program once it will start from the beginning and it will end, it, end at the last but here it is not like that here the program will start from 0 0 0 and it will execute until program memory is finished again it will go back to 0 0 0 so continuously it will keep on executing so that 0 0 0 is known as reset vector and your whole program memory is divided into 4 pages page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4, page 3, total 4 pages, 0 to 3 and there is something known as interrupt vector, what is meant by the interrupt vector, have you heard about interrupts, interrupt, what is meant by interrupt, for example I am designing one embedded device where whenever I am pressing one button I need to do something, so what are the two methods, first method is that my CPU will continuously monitor that switch whether it is pressed or not. If it is pressed, it will do some work, it will do that assigned task. If it is not pressed, it will do some other thing. So what is the disadvantage there? Always your CPU is scanning the switch so that it can't do any other work. That method is known as polling method. Polling means always you are checking that switch, status of switch, whether it is pressed or not. Second method is interrupt method. Interrupt means this switch will be connected to the interrupt pin and whenever switch is pressed, one interrupt will be given to the CPU. So the CPU will be executing some task and when this interrupt is coming, then it will stop the task and go to that routine. Whenever interrupt is not there, it can do the its own task. So that is known as interrupt method. So when interrupt is coming, what it will do? It will stop the program and it will go to some location. Where is that location? How, how uh, 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 we can understand the location? That location is known as this interrupt ve vector location. So for this controller, it is 0x04. 0x04 is your interrupt vector location. That means whenever interrupt is coming, control will go to this location. And there are basically two types of interrupt, non-vectored interrupt and vectored interrupt. What is meant by this? Vectored interrupt means there will be the vector address, that is where to go whenever the interrupt is coming. That will be hardwired into this CPU or we can configure that. That is there are some registers which is holding this interrupt vector address. We can program that. For example, uh, whenever one um, uh, US ADC interrupt is coming, all the peripheral can generate interrupt. For example, I am configuring ADC interrupt. Whenever ADC is producing one interrupt, go to a particular location. That address I am specifying somewhere. And whenever some other peripheral is creating some interrupt, it will go to another location. So all this interrupt vector address will be written in one table that is known as a vector table. So in that, that type of interrupts are known as vectored interrupt. That is for each of the interrupt, there is a corresponding address associated with that. Non-vectored means for all the interrupt, there will be only one address. So here, it is coming under non-vectored. That means whenever any of the interrupt is happening, it will come here. So how I will identify which interrupt has been occurred? How I will do? How I will find out? How I will identify? So for that we are having certain bits known as flags. You had said you know carry flags, zero flag, etc. So similarly we are having something known as interrupt flags. So for ADC interrupt there is one flag, USART interrupt there is some flag, take that. So in this address location I will write one code for checking that flag. For example, USART flag is one. That is that interrupt has been occurred then go to some location. So in this location there will be some go to statements only will be present here in this location, some go to statement. That is whenever it will first check which interrupt has been occurred, if it is USART interrupt, go to some location that will be written here. 
So it is non vectored, only one vector address is there. This is your complete register file map of your RAM allocation, not RAM, SFR and the GPR. So these are known as SFR, special function registers or the named registers. And this location is general purpose register area. So these are the registers and each of the registers are used for controlling certain peripherals. That is each of the register is having corresponding functions. After this status register you can see no? status register is containing all the flags such as carry flag, zero flag all these things similar to program status word you had said in you know, status flag. So all the status condition will be present in this register, this special function register and you can see and your total register file map is divided into four banks, your program memory is divided into four pages, this is your data memory, data memory is divided into four banks. So why you are divided into <coughs> four banks, is there any reason for this division? In your laptop you will be dividing your hard disk into so many smaller sessions, why? One reason is that if the data has been gone everything will be gone, that is one reason. Other reason is that it is easy to access, that I will be putting certain for example entertainment, academics like that. So I will prioritize some data and I will keep in smaller location, that is why it has been divided into four and the amount of bits required for accessing one bank will be fixed. If you are having only one bank, totally one bank, how will access all this location? Number of bits should be more. Here we are having only 8 bit. So 128 bytes only I can access. Since I am having 8 bit microcontroller, I can access only maximum 128 byte. So each of the bank will be having only 128 byte each. That is from 00 to FF. That means only I can access since I am having 8 bit processor. Then general purpose area is used for storing the my storing my variables. So it in the first this is bank 0, bank 0 it is starting from 20H. From here you will be having your general purpose area. So for example I need to access this port A, what I will do? Or I need to access this tris B, what I will do? First thing what should I do? First I need to select this bank, right now. If I want to access this register, first I need to select this bank. So how we will select these banks? That will be done by the same status register. In the status register you are having two bits, RP0 and RP1, RP0 and RP1 two bits are there that you can see in the data sheet and all there. So there depending upon the value written banks will be selected. So two bits will be there. So how many banks you can select with two bits? So you are having RP0 and RP1, two bits. If you are writing 0, 0 in this bit location, this will be bank 0, 0, 1, bank 1 like that 1 1 bank 3. So if I want to access a particular register in a particular bank, first you need to select that bank and selection of bank is done by writing this value into status register. That is in the status, all these are registers. What is meant by register? It is a collection of so many bits will be there. So all these are 8 bit registers, so in the status register there will be 8 bits, out of that 2 bits are RP0 and RP1, these 2 bits are used for selecting the banks, if you are writing 0, 0 it will be bank 0, 1, 1 it will be bank 3, so like that you can select, so after selecting the bank then only I can write something or read something from that register, otherwise we can do, 
and certain registers are present in all the banks you can see no fsr status pcl etc why it is present in all the banks they are <coughs> they are the registers which we are using frequently for some of the important registers that registers are present in all the banks so there is no need of switching the banks these are the registers which are very much important so they are present in all the banks even though irrespective of the bank which we are staying now you can write or read from this and this fsr no you can see this fsr means file selected register file selected register these fsrs are used for controlling data in indirect mode that is fsr are fsrs are similar to pointers in c fsrs are similar to pointers in c that means i will write some data into fsr content of that data that address can be made available in this register indirect register first i will write some address into fsr content of that fsr that address will be present in this area that is how you are doing the indirect addressing for example i need to write some data into some address so first i'll take that address and i'll keep it in this fsr and i will write into this indirect address that location that is known as indf one register is there indf that is indirect register so the content of the location pointed by fsr will be present in indf or if you want to write something into address pointed by fsr you can write into indf so indf show, get, uh, shows the content of that address and fsr will be the pointer which is containing the address next we will go on to instruction set we are having uh, in the 8086 and all we are having so many type of addressing mode no? so with the same move move command we will be applying so many addressing mode right no? move a comma b a comma bracket to be so many type but here only three type of moves are there totally the atf instructions are there but we will not see all these things all these addition subtraction anding and all we will not see now we will be only seeing which are registers are needed for configuring a peripheral such as led blinking usr etc all this pick and all we will not be it will not be used for addition subtraction etc so here only three type of moves are there first one is move literal value to work register that is move lw usually the move for example if you are writing move a comma b content of move a b will be moved to a that is from left to right move a comma b content of b will be moved to a that is being done usually but here it is just opposite all movement is towards right move lw means move literal value to w that is from l to w you are moving from l to w that is from left to right what is meant by this literal literal is nothing but one constant value so you are moving this constant value to w register work register so where you will specify that constant value that will be given as your argument data appo move lw 0x02 0x02 means hexadecimal 02 that everybody is knowing no 0x02 means hexadecimal 0b01 means binary like that so 0x shows that the numbers coming after that is hexadecimal value 0x shows that number coming after <coughs> this is <coughs> hexadecimal value above move lw 0x02 means you are moving this literal value to w register <coughs> so usually w will be having 000 and after executing this w will be having this literal value that is move literal value to work register next one move content of work register to file register now you have moved a constant value to w 
sometimes i need to move the content of w to some other register content of w should be moved to some other register for that you are using move wf move wf means move content of w to file register left to right so now what is the content of w now the content of w is 0x02 and after executing this move wf file register so i am taking file register as port you have seen that file register in sfr so let it, let it be one register so here after executing this this 0x02 present in w register will be moved to file register port a so now port a is also having a content that is 0x02 i am moving the content of work register to port a third move is move the content of file register to some other location now we had moved the content of working register to file register sometimes i need to read the content of file register so what i will do for reading the content of file register you are using this move f <coughs> so move f means content of file register will be moved to some destination in both these cases source and destination was available right no but in the last case only source is there destination is not there that is where to move so that will be specified as your argument this destination so destination can be 0 or 1 so if you are giving move f port a comma 0 means content of port a will be moved to working register work register so 0 means it is work register 1 means it is the same register so move f port a comma 0 means content of port a will be moved to working register that is equivalent to move fw that is equivalent to move fw that is content of file register you are moving to working register that is how you are reading from an sfr special function register i need to read something from the sfr for example i need to check whether carry has been set so what you will do i need to read from status register so i will give move f status comma zero so content of status register will be moved to work register sometimes i need to store the content to same location itself so i'll be giving one so content of port will be red and it will be written back to this file register itself so destination 1 means the same file register 0 means work register so that is about the move next they are bit manipulation commands for example i am having one <coughs> register like this i am having one register port equal to I am having some 8 bits 8 bit value I need to set this bit I need to make this bit as 1 so which is this bit location 0th bit first bit etc up to 7 so this is the LSB this is the LSB this is the MSB last one is lsb first one is msp so this method of representation is known as little indian representation <coughs> little indian little indian <coughs> there are two type of representation little indian and big indian So big Indian representation will be used in Motorola's controllers. You had seen the 68HC. There they will be using big Indian. In ARM, PIC, etc., you will be using little Indian. So how will uh, remember this, uh, what is meant by little Indian and big Indian? Little Indian means for remembering you can uh, uh, remember like this. Last ending bit will be little value, LSV. That is in the case of little Indian ending bit will be little value lsb 
that is little indian so just the opposite is it is big indian big indian means ending bit will be bigger value that is ms b so here we are having little indian and in this case i want to set this bit this bit so what is this bit 0 1 2 third bit bit number 3 so i need to set that bit so what what should i do for setting that bit there are two methods either i can write one value into this port port equal to 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 so what is this 0x 0 8 first method is that i can write port i equal to 0x 08 which means what i am setting only this bit third bit what is another method i can set this bit alone one method is that i can completely write this value into port i that is first method second method is i can set this bit alone i can set as well as clear this bit alone for that we are using this these two bit set to file register that is bsf and bit clear file register that is bcf bsf means bit set file register so how we will set that bit alone bit set file register file register comma bit so what is the file register now in this case which is the file register in this case your file register is port a what is the bit in this case bit 3 so i will write bsf port a comma 3 <coughs> so for setting that bit alone i'll be writing bsf port a comma 3 then that bit alone will be set similarly i need to make that bit zero or i need to clear that bit so what should i do bcf port a comma 3 so if you are giving bcf port a comma 3 that bit will be cleared so these two are used for setting the particular bit in the register as well as as well as clearing the particular bit in the register so these two instructions will be used for your led blinking etc that is for switching on the led we need to switch on one bit alone because each bit is here each bit is corresponding to one pin in the controller let it be port b port b means i told you are having eight pins so each of the pins are corresponding to separate bits and they will be referred as rb0 to <coughs> rb7 this way will be representing each bit that is port b is 0th bit is referred as rb0 port b is 7th bit is referred as rb7 so for example i am connecting one led at pin rb0 pin number rb0 will be pin 40 i am connecting one led i need to switch on that led so what i do i'll give bsf port b comma 0 bsf port b comma 0 means that led will be on bcf port b comma 0 means that led will be off that is why we are using this next one so that is in the case where you are using it led <coughs> let us take another case <coughs> there you need to connect one switch so let it be like this let it be rb0 <coughs> i am connecting one switch like this it will be vcc 5 volt i have connected this switch to rb0 <coughs> so when i am closing this switch what will be the value of this pin 
when you are closing this switch the value will be 1 right no? 1 corresponds to 5 volt in TTL 0 corresponds to 0 volt logic 0 when I am opening this switch what will be the value <coughs> when you are opening this switch So when you are opening as well as closing it is 1 then we cannot differentiate them. So when you are opening the switch whether it will be 0 or floating tri state tri state floating state have you heard about there are totally 3 states 1 0 and tri state tri state we cannot predict sometimes it will be 0 sometimes it will be 1. So how I will identify? So now I cannot detect zero. No? So when my switch is open, it should be zero, right? No. When my switch is open, it should be made as zero. Then only I can do some activity. So how I will make this as zero? Whenever the switch is open, I need to make this pin as zero. So what I will do? So for that you are using a method known as Pull up a resistor, pull down resistor. So here you will give one resistor, one K. And you will connect this point to ground. So what it will be happening? Whenever the switch is open, this will be ground, zero. Whenever the switch is closed, VCC will be coming in. So this is known as pull down resistor. Similarly, there is one more configuration which is just opposite to this. That means your switch will be connected to ground. That means whenever you are closing the switch, zero will be coming. When you are opening the switch, we need to have one. Stable one we need to have. For that you will be giving a resistor known as pull up resistor. So whenever the switch is open, 5 volt will be coming that is 1 and now we are closing ground will be coming. So in the, both these cases how I will check whether the switch is closed or not I need to check this bit right now. By checking this bit only I can identify whether this is closed or open. So how I will check this bit alone I can check the I can check like this that is I can read the complete value I can check whether it is some value otherwise how I will check. I need to set check that bit alone or test that bit alone test whether that bit is 1 or 0 that is set or clear that is done by using this bit test file register skip if set since it is a risk processor your instructions are very less so by using one instruction you can do uh, so many operations so here first it will test that bit first it will test that bit test for what btfss means bit test file register skip if set that is it will test whether that bit is set it will test whether that bit in the file register whether this bit in the file register is set if it is set what it will do if it is set it will skip the next statement if that bit is set it will skip the next statement that is being done here so for example i am writing like this so here whenever i am pressing a switch i need to make one led glow so how i will write i need to btfss i am connecting like this rb0 and my LED is in RC0. My LED is in RC0. So BTFSS, which bit I need to set a test? Port B is 0 to bit. So port B, comma 0. I am checking that bit whether it is set. If it is set, what it will do? It will skip the next statement. So here I am writing some go to L1 let it be L1 and here I am writing BSF 
what is comma 0. So, when that bit is set, go to will be skipped. That is, whenever this condition is satisfied, it will skip the next statement. That is meant by bit test file register skip if set. It will skip this and it will come here. So, here what you have written? BSF port C comma 0. That means switch on this LED. So, that is one program segment. There are some other operations to be done. So, this is a this I had given in order to understand this. So, similarly, I am changing this. I am changing this configuration to this configuration. So, what change I should give? I am changing my configuration of this switch from this one to this one. So, what what should I change in this program? So, in this case, whenever the switch is closed, that bit will be cleared 0. So, what should I do? I need to test that bit whether it is clear. So, what should I do? I will change this S with C. I will change that S with C. So, that is these two. Here, bit test file register skip if clear. That is here when you are pressing the switch, 0 is coming. That means that bit is clear. So, which bit you are testing? That is mentioned in this bit position. So, here in this case, B, BTFSC, port B, comma 0 means port B is 0th bit. That is RB0. That RB0 you are checking whether it is 0 or clear. If it is clear, what you should do? You should skip this go to and you should come to BSF. So, when you are executing BSF, that LED will be on. So, this is a segment for switch with LED program. I will ask you to write the program after some time. So, this is segment for switch with LED program. <coughs> Two more instructions we will see. Next one is DECFSZ decrement file register skip is here. Yeah. So, next we will see two more instructions. Why we are using this? Because for example, I need to create one delay in the C program, delay, delay program. So, how we will create a delay usually? Usually for creating delay, for example, let this be my <coughs> count variable. In this variable, I am writing 10, I am writing 10. And how I will create a delay? I will decrement this count by 1. That is, now it is 9. And I will check whether this is 0. If it is not 0, what you will do? Again, you will decrement. And it will go on decrementing until you are reaching 0. So, in C, how many statements should be there? First, you need to decrement. Then, you need to check using if statement. If it is not 0, again you need to go to the statement above. That is again decrement. So, this is how you are creating a delay usually in C. So, here for doing all these things, you are having one instruction. Decrement file register skip if 0. That means, before giving the statement, I need to initialize a variable count with one highest value. So, how we will move? some literal value into a file register. How will I move? For example, this 10. I need to move into count. So, by using the instruction we had seen, how we will move? Can I directly move this value into register? How will, how will do? Move? Can I directly move this literal value into a file register? Directly we cannot move. For that, first you need to move this literal value into work register. From work register only you need to move into other one. So how will I, how will I write? First you will give 
move L W, let it be 0 x 1 0. Then, so now this content has been entered into W. Next I need to move this into count. So what I will do? Move WF. Right now. Move WF. What will be the register? Count. So here 10 has been entered into W. That is literal value to W. In the next statement, the content of W is moved to file register. Which is that file register? Count. So now the content of count is 10. Now I need to start decrementing and check whether it is 0. So how I will write decrement FSZ file register comma destination. So why you are giving destination? Because after decrementing the count again you need to store the result back to that register itself. Right now either after decrementing this count you can write into two location you can write into work register or you can write into this register for implementing a delay loop we need to write back into this register only then only I can again decrement that value right now so for that we are giving one destination and as one so content of count will be decremented by one and it will be stored back to that register itself So after one decrementing what we should do? You need to check that content whether it is 0 or not. If it is 0 what it will do? Skip if 0, it will skip the next statement. So what should be the next statement in order to implement a delay loop? Go to L1, L1. So if it is not 0, this statement will be executed. So control will come here, again it will decrement. Again, if it is not 0, again it will keep on decrementing. And when it is becoming 0, this go to will be skipped and control will come here. So, here some statement will be there that will be executed. So, this is for implementing delay. So, instead of decrementing, you can also increment. So, while you are incrementing, what you should do? You should give the smallest value. First you should give 0. So it will increment and keep on incrementing and it will reach FF. After FF what will come? 0. At that time it will skip. When you are incrementing, you will increment from the lowest value to highest. After highest again low, lowest value will come. At that time it will skip. So usually we will be using this DEC FSZ for creating a delay. So these are the uh, 5 or 6 instructions we need to learn for doing most of the programs other than addition subtraction all these things that is not required here why we are doing that uh, in pick uh, that i don't know here we will be using this controller for certain controlling application so we'll remove all the other statement then how we will program that so by using the statement we will be writing an assembly program and what are the steps for programming or compiling? First, I will write this in some editor. That editor is known as here. You will be having an MBLAB ID. MBLAB means microchip laboratory. So, microchip has given you an ID similar to your MATLAB, etc. ID means integrated development environment. When you are uh, doing 8085, no? you are giving commands, TASM. That means it will assemble. T link means it will link. So by using commands you are doing all these procedures. It is very difficult. So in order to avoid all these things, they have combined all these executables, all these process into one environment. That is known as integrated development environment. So there you can have editor, compiler, assembler, linker, etc. All these things are present here. So by simply clicking one button, all this will be done sequentially. First it will assemble. If there are any errors, it will show that. <coughs> if there is no error, it will link and it will generate final hex file. <coughs> so after the compilation of the program, if it is if there is no error, we will get a hex file which will be having all these hexadecimal values. 
when you are opening x, uh, x file I will show that we will be seeing only some values we cannot read the program and this program you need to burn into the controller for that you will be having a programmer and for programming also there are three different methods first method it is conventional method that is we will take the chip place it on the programmer then program that is first method second method is known as bootloader mode bootloader what is meant by bootloader 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 means it is a small program residing on the chip and what is the function of that it will receive the program files coming through the serial port or whichever port it will receive the program file and keep it in the program memory that is a function of bootloader it will take the program files which is coming through the serial port and it will keep it in the program memory so there is no need of taking that chip and placing it in the programmer by using pin that is i told you in circuit serial programming by using two pins you can program so before programming that in the bootloader uh, method what you should do first you should burn the bootloader into the chip so that burning of the bootloader will be done through the programmer so in the first phase you need to burn the bootloader once it is burned it will be staying there so first you need to use the programmer and burn the bootloader then the bootloader will be residing on the chip after that you will be supplying the hex file through two lines receive and transmit serial lines so what the bootloader will do when the programmer program is coming it will collect that program and write it into programmable program rom program memory that is a function of bootloader that is the second method third method is <coughs> you will be using some programming lines are there in system isp programming that means there are some four four or five lines are there through that we can program so in that case the advantage is that there is no need of bootloader <coughs> in the case of icsp usually we need one bootloader that should be programmed through the conventional programmer but in the case of isp in system programming there is no need of bootloader there are some five lines pgd some lines are there five lines through that line i will be having one programmer outside I'll be having one small program or outside that can also be programmed using serial port or USB, so you can connect it to your laptop also. So there will be a ISP programmer, and that programmer will be universal for all the controllers, whether it is 16F, 12F, 18F, all these things. So I will connect this programmer into these five lines. It will be also having that five lines. I'll connect this, and I will give program. So, which our program it is uh, we are building that will be entering. That is that hex file. So, advantage is that there is no need of bootloader. ISP. But in that case, this ISP hardware should be present. And after burning that, that system that chip will be transferred to your actual embedded device, and it will work. It will start working. And what are the basic circuit required for a this pick to work? This is the basic circuit. This much is the power supply. If you are having regulated power supply, then it is not required. Here you will be having transformer with the rectifier. From there, what is this LM seven eight zero five? This is a five volt regulator, plus five volt regulator. Seven nine zero five means negative five volt regulator. This is five volt regulator, and here you will be getting around the 12 volt that 12 volt will be regulated to 5 volt so at this output you will be having 5 volt and all these things are known as filter or filter capacitors or charge pumps so here you will be having 5 volt supply and this 5 volt you need to give it into vdd vss vdd vss <coughs> here also you can see you no know, vdd vss these two pins are internally shorted either you can connect it into these two pins or you can connect it to this pins also so you can give this vdd to this pin as well as this pin then ground to this pin as well as this pin so now we had given the power supply next i told you you need to have the oscillator crystal oscillator for that this is the crystal oscillator this is the symbol i am connecting it into oscillator 1 and 2 13 and 14 i am connecting then two capacitors these are the filter capacitors for 
removing the small noise in present in here small filter capacitor then these are the main things we need to have power supply and clock and one more thing is required whenever you are switching on the supply I told you your pick should be resetted if it is not resetting it will not work for that we need to connect this memory clear pin through 10 k to the 5 volt 10 k or any less than 100 k so usually we will be putting 10 k so now we are pulling up this pin to VCC right now this is somewhat like pull up we are pulling this pin up to VCC so whenever you are giving the supply it will reset but in between in between the program sometimes I need to reset then what you will do for that you are giving this reset switch so when you are pressing this ground will enter right now so when you are pressing this ground will enter so this pin is written as memory clear bar VPP VPP means this one you are pulling up memory clear bar means your this reset whenever we need to reset we will press this so only this much connection is required for your controller to work then if you want to connect one LED so what you will do LED in, in this pin so I will connect one resistor and LED ground as shown in this picture only that much is required for this thing work, to work and after this is a hardware setup then we need to burn the program also <coughs> so if you have burned the program for blinking LED it will start blinking so next uh, uh, we have studied some seven uh, instructions no? so write one program for blinking on LED program segment there are some extra fittings for the program that we will see later so now write a program for LED blinking so how we will write what are the steps <coughs> first what are the steps first I need to switch on the LED then switch off the LED is that method so if you are switching on then switching off then whether you can see the blinking effect because I told here one instruction is executing in one microsecond so if you are switching on and switching off we cannot see the effect so what you will do switch on delay switch off again delay whether the second delay is required no not required whether the second delay is required or not if the second delay is not there when the program is again looping back here you had done a switching off no again it will switch on so in order to prevent that one delay will be given after this clearing also so switch on delay switch off delay so for that you need to understand some more things no? you need to study how to configure digital IO port right no? digital IO ports are your peripheral simply you cannot write some value into that we need to configure that port I told you, you are having some port and all these are digital IO port IO means it can be configured as input or output right no so how we will configure this pin as input or output whenever you want to connect an LED you will be configuring for example RC0 here this pin I will be configuring it as output right no this pin I will be configuring it as input why you are configuring it as input because I need to read this bit since I need to read this bit or test this bit I will be configuring this as input here I am writing 1 or 0 to this pin so that means this pin should be configured as output so that is the direction of the port so how we will configure the direction of a port so, with, so there are two registers associated with all hardware ports there are two registers associated with each of the hardware port <coughs> they are tris x register and port x register tris x register and port x register so if you are writing for port a for port a 
it will be this is a hardware port this port is hardware port this port is register port do not confuse between these two this is a hardware port hardware port means it is a collection of pins this port means this is a register present in that register map Upper for port a you will be having trus a and port a so here this x shows the port name for port a it will be trus a for port b it will be trus b for port e it will be trus e like that so what is the function of these two registers first i told you you need to control configure the direction of that port first step is that you need to configure the direction so for configuring the direction you are using this trus register trus means tri state register and trus register is also having 8 bit and i can set the direction of each pin separately so how will set if i am writing 1 that pin will be configured as input <coughs> if i am writing 0 that pin will be configured as output so in that case <coughs> you are having you are connecting you are going to connect the switch to rb0 right no? that means port b is 0th bit i am going to connect the switch in that diagram so i need to make that bit alone as input all the others as output so what value i should write <coughs> trus b equal to 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 right no? that means if you are writing a 1 into a particular bit in the trus b that pin will be configured as input if you are writing a 0 into a particular bit that pin will be configured as output so sometimes i am i need to connect one more switch at rb6 one more switch i need to connect in rb6 so what change i need to make 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 <coughs> so this means that i am making these two pins as this is rb6 this is rb0 I am making these two pins as input port, input pins. All the others are configured as output. And at the switch, at the reset state, all your ports will be configured as input or output. Why? At the time of reset, all your port will be configured as input only. Why? because you are using this controller in some critical application and you are going to control some uh, uh, peripheral which is causing some lags let us take like that you are going to control a big peripheral using this small chip so sometimes at the time of uh, resetting some noise signal or something may have gone through this IO pin so what it will happen it will damage the other device no? so if it is configured as output sometimes some signal may go to the device and it will damage the other one which is more costlier so in order to avoid that they had made all the pins as input so that what will happen if something is happening this controller will only go other peripheral will be protected so for that at the time of reset all the pins will be in the default case it will be input and so if you want to make a pin as input you will be writing one output means zero so that is a function of trus register then what is a function of port register so this is a this register is known as direction register you can call it like that direction register then what is the function of port port register why it is being used <coughs> what is the function of port register so now we had configured the direction only next i need to write I need to switch on that LED that is I need to write 1 or 0 so what is this 1 or 0 that is nothing but your data here you had configured the direction of the port next if you want to write a LED blinking program I need to write 1 or 0 that 1 or 0 means it is data right I need to have some register for 
writing this data. So that is the register. So this port register is the data register where you are writing the data. And I need to switch on the LED which is connected to RC0. What value I should write into port C? What value I should write? Port C equal to 1. This means port C 0th bit will be 1, made as 1. That means the LED connected at this pin, port C 0th pin will be on, will glow. I need to switch on one more LED here. So what I will write? I'll write 0, 1, 0. All the others will be 0. So this shows the data. This shows the direction. So depending upon the register which you are writing, the functionality will be different. Next I need to switch off this LED. What I will write? I need to write 0, 0, 0, complete 0. So when you are writing 0, that pin will be giving 0 volt. If you are writing 1, that pin will be giving 5 volt. And for limiting that resistor, limiting the current you are putting that resistor. So how we will design this resistor, value of this one? Here we will be having 5 volt. <coughs> what is the dro <coughs> drop across this diode? Usually what is the drop? Uh, that is your uh, ordinary diode. Here LED around 2 volt. So 5 minus 2 by current V by R equal to V by I equal to R. No? Right. No? So 5 minus 2 by 10 milliampere. We will get around 300 ohm. Around 300 ohm you will get. And this resistor we will be putting here. So we do not have a 300 ohm resistor, it is not possible, it is uh, not standard. So we will put a 330 ohm. You can put one, 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 K, 1 kilo ohm also we can put, no problem. But usually we will be putting this 330 ohm. That is how we will be designing that <coughs> resistor. So next, so then by understanding this, what are the steps for blinking the LED? First you need to configure that pin as for example, I am going uh, write a pro program for blinking 8 LEDs connected in port B. 8 LEDs I had connected in port B. Write a program for blinking them. So first what should, do, what should I do? I need to first configure that port as output. Complete pins as output. Next I need to make all as ones. I need to write the data. So all will be switched on. Then you give some delay. 